hello, hola, hola, amigos, amigas. Welcome to Lima, welcome to Peru once again. Thanks so, so much for coming today to visit me virtually in this special occasion because I am celebrating my second anniversary here at Hago and it's officially my second uh, year as a virtual tour guide. So to me, this is an extra special time because it's not just because of the holidays, it's because of your friendships, it's because all the beautiful things I've learned in these years uh, and we keep learning, uh, we all are learning, especially after this world pandemic, uh, some of us learn to reinvent ourselves. So, well, thank you so much for, for your friendship and thank you so, so much for being there, uh, even till now uh, in, in these times, uh, in which we can now travel in person, uh, but we are choosing also to stay virtual. Um, so, well, thanks a lot. Hola, Patrick. Hola, amigos. ¿Qué tal? Let me say hi to all the people joining uh, to today's event. And also earlier, by the way, my friend Sayuri made a very special tour dedicated also to my second uh, year anniversary. Uh, it was 6 a.m. when the time she started for me, so I couldn't join early. But thanks, Sayuri. If you are there, mwah, gracias. JB, hola. Hola, Ruth. Ken, hello. Hello, Linda. Hola, Adrian, Kathy, Tracy. Hello, Ellen. Thanks for joining. Diane. Hola, Mabel. Mwah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Hi, Mark. Hello, all amigos. And, and thanks a lot for, for your visit. And hola, Marilyn. Hello. Thanks a lot for being here today. Uh, and all the people that are just joining, Cindy, and all the people that are just coming today and, and visit me. So, well, I'm so happy that the group uh, is, is this big. And today we're going to cook also together because this is one of the things I am starting to do, cooking for you all. And also, I will be sharing with you some childhood memories because I have pictures of when I was a little girl. And I think it's going to be interesting also to share with you all how was my life uh, back then in the 80s. I was born in 1983, by the way, so I will be sharing very old pictures. Um, but I know I look like I am 20, so <laughs> you might be all oh, surprised. Um, <laughs> so, um, well, I am to be also 40 next year, September 15. Probably I'm going to be doing a special event for that occasion. Uh, and because 40 is the new 20s, is that right? Or well, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. <laughs> so we're going to be cooking. And in the meantime, I will be also doing some really, really nice, like uh, sharing of my own pictures and experiences about, you know, life in Lima. So I really hope you would like this special event. And we are cooking together today. Christmas rice. So what is the name of this Christmas rice? Well, arroz arabe, Arab rice. Might be also surprising that we eat something called Arab rice in Peru, but yes, yes, we love Arab rice. So we're going to first put one spoon of um, butter uh, here in the pan, and we're going to just melt very well the butter. For this purpose, we're going to low a little bit the heat in the pan so we don't want it to be burned. And while this is happening, right, we are going also to proceed in talking about some of the ingredients we're going to be using. So please take notes because, uh, as you know, uh, it is important also to, uh, to remember the step by step. But if you were not able to, to take notes, you know, if it's not possible for you now, I will be posting this event on my YouTube channel. So you can go back there later and you can cook this at home with your friends. And maybe you can add something new to your uh, Christmas, you know, like table. So I hope you do it. Um, next thing we're going to be doing, this is angel's hair noodles. Uh, Cabello de angel in Spanish. 
Um, well, I am using not the regular one, not because the, you know, the recipe has something like a different one. I discovered recently I have problems with gluten. So I am using the one that is gluten free. But if you have, you know, like a, you know, a, no problems at all about this, use a regular angel hair uh, noodles, approximately 100 grains of this. So you're going to just cook this for a little while, for a few minutes. We're going to be moving this uh, like uh, slowly, you know, and the pan is not really so hot. So the noodles are going to get a very nice flavor uh, from the butter, okay? So while this is being done, I will be also going to the next thing we're going to be adding to our uh, rice. And remember, this is arroz arabe. Peruvians have incorporated lots of different, um, let's say, international dishes to our uh, table of Christmas. It's really interesting because we have you know, ancient, traditional, pre-Hispanic, you know, uh, ingredients that we still love to use. Like, for example, the ceviche is also pre-Hispanic. Uh, and we have also the tamales, you know. And we eat llama, alpaca in different parts of Peru. But we are also very, very open to new products, to new ingredients, to new flavors. And that's how recently, for example, the Japanese cuisine has become such a trendy, uh, like a, and also a fusionated fusion cuisine for us because we have the Peruvian Japanese food, uh, like that we call Nikkei. Uh, also, we have the Peruvian Chinese food, which is the chifa, right? So uh, Peruvians love, love, love flavors and to try new things. So maybe it's not a surprise for you that our Christmas table reflects also how multicultural we are and how open we are to different uh, traditions, culinary traditions. So the bacon I am using today, uh, this is tocino in Spanish, tocino. The bacon I am using today, right, is about 100 grains also of bacon. I am cutting it in, as you can see, a small dices. Uh, I will be also cutting a little bit more. Let me just uh, check on the. Uh, look, it is getting a little bit more to toasty. You know my noodles. In a moment, I will show you also in detail how it looks like. But don't forget that you have to keep moving this, so in that way it will not burn. Okay. So we are cutting this a hundred grains of. Bacon, ah, tocino ahumado, smoked bacon, okay? Look, amigos, how is it starting to look? Huh? Gracias, Adrian, gracias, gracias. Gracias, Patrick. Thanks, amigo, for your support. You are awesome. Patrick has been, you know, like supporting all his friends, guys in Latin America since the beginning and i really i'm happy to call your friend gracias amigo gracias so almost there almost there with the noodles um in a moment i will be checking also your comments amigos because i don't want anything of this to be burned but you know your questions are and comments are also very important for me so once again, look, can you see? After more or less four to five minutes, these noodles have taken the color brownish that I want. And the heat is not really high, eh? the heat is low. It's a low heat uh, that is what we need for not burning our noodles. So I think it's there already, okay, look. Final resort, after more or less five minutes, it is already, you know, like a brownish, brownish. Uh-huh. 
But this is not, of course, yet completely done because it's going to go later on our pot, okay? So now we have our pot. I will make you closer a little bit now because we need, of course, to see the details of this part of the class. So, um, you know that the, the Arab rice is really quite popular in different parts of the world. Well, at least that's what I learned recently when I was doing my research for this event, uh, because I always talk about the history of some of the dishes. Uh, most of my dishes also have a really interesting history. So um, I'm just taking out the water here. So, um, well, Arabs receive the rice of how I know of it was a long distance of course trip of the rice to to the Arabs from uh, the Mughals influence um, and it's very interesting also that the Mughals also spread over you know the consumption of rice um, in different parts of the world and um, I am going to add the 100 grams of bacon now to the pot and I'm not using any oil as you can see Okay, I'm not using oil and we are going now to use a different wooden spoon for mixing this. And we need also to be very patient with this because there is going to be also an oil that is going to start coming from the bacon. Okay, so let me check if there is any question. Uh-huh. And remember also that if you are celiac, there is noodles for you. Yes. Uh, there are noodles for you. Okay, so we're going to just diminish this. Oil. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> heat has to be not so high. Gracias, Elizabeth. I'm just checking on the comment of Elizabeth. I was looking up, scrolling up the comments. <laughs> okay. And this is the rice you need to add to your um, to your table for the preparations of the Christmas. Look at this. It's starting to come up. Some oil. So, and vegetarian bacon for vegetarian. <laughs> yes, I can imagine, Martin. Well, unfortunately, most of the Peruvian dishes cannot be completely switched to be uh, to vegetarians, but we can always try new things. I also had my vegetarian phase at some point in my life. I was trying to look for more healthy lifestyle because I was not feeling so good with my belly and my, well, I think that everything in me started to slow down when I turned 30. So, and that probably is because I am celiac. So probably that's the reason, right? So in a moment, we are going to move out the bacon, okay? So um, the Christmas table is of Peru. Oh, the dinner that we have late at night, you know, on the 24th to the 25th uh, is really funny. It's very peculiar because we have an international diversity of options. We have from the Italian panettone, we have hot chocolate in the summer, probably the most, the hottest summer night we have in that part of the year. Um, we have also a, a salad called the Russian salad. We have turkey, like the style of the uh, Thanksgiving turkey, very, very similar. We have Arab rice. So they're ready. I'm counting like several international dishes. Okay, so now we're going to move this out. I don't want it to be burned. It's already cooked. 
the pot has already the flavor of the bacon, okay? And now we're going to use oil. Hmm? Let me check on this. Kitchen is an art, and not everybody was born also, you know, with a natural, let's say, thing in the hands to cook like a master chef but i do believe everybody can develop you know like a let's say that that something no to 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 make dishes to be well delish delicious so my grandma was a really good chef really good cook hmm? so we are adding now oil i added olive oil and we're going to heat up a little bit of this oil. Just give me a second. I am looking for this, which is the, maybe you know what is this. I'll just put a little bit low because I need first to open this. Um, at the market here in Peru, we have a section called Especeria. You know, especeria is a section where the spices are. So this is garlic paste. Um, we are so lucky that we have ladies already doing this for us. And also the chilies, like everything. Everything is done like easy, easy for us. You know, life is now more complicated. So this is one spoon of garlic paste. We're going to lower a little bit more the uh, fire okay going to do it this is the base of the peruvian cuisine i always say it amigos amigas if you want to cook peruvian food it's not difficult but you need to have some basic ingredients that now thank god are really everywhere around the world thanks to Amazon. <laughs> Gracias. El. For example, you need your garlic paste, you need your uh, red onion, you know, that's okay, that's easy, you know, and then you have also, you need a red chili paste and yellow chili paste. Okay, so that is basic. Now, after this part, after adding the garlic, the, that was a spoon of garlic, we're going to add one and a half cups of water okay so be careful with this when you are you know with a pan because you know there's oil in it one sorry uh -huh, one and a half cups okay one and a half keep this in mind because we will need one and a half of water. You're going to make your rice, right? And one and a half of a black soda. Chan, 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 chan. Huh. By the way, I am not a sponsor by Coca-Cola. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, tell them. They can sponsor me if they wish. So uh, this is a black soda. You know, you can choose the one you like. And we're going to use also <laughs> the same cup and a half of a black soda. Why? Well, your rice is going to be dark also. And we're going to use three cups of rice. Okay, so one and a half of water, one and a half of soda, and we're going to leave this with high temperature because we're going to wait for this to boil, okay? And we're going to close this. Oh, oopsie. So we're going just to leave this here, and this will give us a chance to reorganize ourselves and also... We're going to have the chance. I have here my, the recipe of my grandmother. I want to show you also my grandmother. But 
she's now in heaven. So I will show you her pictures. Uh, um, my grandmother, she is the person who inspired this show because she always wanted to be a chef. Uh, and she always wanted to, a professional chef, I mean. And she always wanted to have a book. She made notes, like all her life, she made notes about what, I mean, she, since she was, you know, an adult, she made notes in, in a notebook that she had, like uh, several of them, actually. She collected many of them. Um, with recipes, she started to recollect. Um, so, well, uh, she was not able to, to make it uh, to the point of, of publishing everything as she wanted to, but I want to do it for her. So that's why I'm making a book in this moment. This is a, um, a cookbook uh, with her recipes. Uh, um, I am giving this cookbook uh, to my sponsors um, as, as a way to say thanks for the people who are supporting this channel in that way. Um, I know being a sponsor is not an easy thing because you need to have certain level of compromise with the channel. It's like $10 per, per month. But uh, this is a, a way to, to give back to, to you all. So now we're going to continue doing some other things because we need also for part of the recipe uh, um, um, pecans. Uh, we need pecans. Mm? So um, we need about 50 grains. So I think we're going to take a little, half of this, this was 100 grains. See, and we're going to smash them okay so how easy we will do it the flingstons way what is the flingstons way <laughs> are you ready so i put it in the back so in that way let me just move the camera down so in that way it will not splash everywhere Yes, lean. It is the easiest way, right? Just use a plastic bag, you know? Close it. Easy. Okay. So I think we have this ready. One thing less. One thing less to think about. Put this here. Okay. Muy bien. We don't need this anymore. Thank you so much to all the people that are joining to my second year anniversary. Sorry, I'm just trying to move things away from the camera. <laughs> um, to my second year anniversary. Uh, I am so, so happy to have you all. And by the way, we are not being sponsored by Coca-Cola. I wish one day. <laughs> gracias, Tessa. Gracias, amigos, who are uh, kindly supporting this, this event. I will be using now a spoon, and we are going to add to the boiling water two spoons. Oh, it smells like Coca-Cola. Two spoons of soy sauce. Okay. By the way, uh, you probably know I am staying away from gluten, but there is soy sauce that is gluten-free. So if you're having my problem, don't think you cannot do it. Uh, uh, like most of the recipes that I'm telling you, like sharing with you because you know of gluten issues. No, no, no. Uh, we can make them gluten-free. So we are just leaving that. One more minute. And we are going to go to the next part. Sayuri! <laughs> Amiga, hola, gracias for your uh, birthday, uh, sorry, <laughs> celebration event, my anniversary. I feel like a birthday because, you know, it's like I was, you know, reborn after the, you know, pandemic and with this virtual uh, world and all the things we have seen, you know, like the changes we have seen. You know, it's like a, like a birthday. Okay, 
it is already boiling. I will just make closer the camera. So we are cooking Christmas rice, but Peruvian Christmas rice, because the Christmas rices might be very different depending on where you are in the world, of course. So we are going to put this camera here. We are going to diminish a little bit of the temperature so in that way it will not evaporate too fast. Uh, we're going to add now salt. Okay. So we're going to be adding about two spoons of the salt. One. Sorry, I think you're not seeing it. And two. More or less. But later you can correct if you think it's not enough. Then we are going to be adding the great raisins. So let me just show you the raisins. You can chop them little, little if you wish. I like them to look like big. So it really depends on you. So these are black raisins. You can also use the, uh, the yellow ones if you wish. It's really up to you. Okay, I have hydrated them with water, so they were little, but for about an hour, it is, you know, like the raisins is also a very important part. It's 100 grams of raisins. Mm -hmm. We're going to add also the noodles. Look at our noodles. Do you remember this part? If you haven't seen this part, no worries, amigos, if you just came, you have to go to my YouTube channel. I will be uploading the full event from beginning to end there in our channel. So don't be worried. Just relax. If you were not able to take notes of this event, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Hmm? Going to just move a little bit this. What else we are going to add? What are we missing? Uh, who is paying attention to the details? There's another thing we are missing that we did in the beginning. This is the bacon. Bacon. And there's one more ingredient, which is the most important one, of course. Hola, Grace. Grace, querida, amiga mía, preciosa. Uh, my friend Grace is one of my very first friends, Hago hey guys, that I met in Argentina when I was, well, lucky enough to travel to Buenos Aires early this year. Before I keep going with the story how we met, three cups of rice. Three cups of rice. This is regular rice, already washed. It's clean. And why we are using three cups of rice is easy because we had one and a half cup of water and one and a half cup of what beverage it was. Who remembers? I'm sure Marilyn remembers. <laughs> and Ronnie. <laughs> This couldn't be out of rice without rice, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look at how it's now a rice. So probably we will need a little bit more of water at some point. I'll keep that in mind. We have also the touch of flavor. These are the pecans. 50 grains of pecans. Mm -hmm. We keep moving. And now it's looking really like a nice rice. I think we will just give a little bit of water. Just a little pinch of water, just in case. Okay. Just a tiny bit, a tiny bit. Muy bien. Okay, so we are putting this to boil and we will be checking constantly. We are preparing a Christmas rice for 
your 24th night time of December or maybe the 25th, depends on you. You know something, we are very strange. The Rubians are very strange because you know probably already how much we love to eat, right? But you don't know that on Christmas, we really like cross all the limits. We cross all the, the borders. Salud, gracias for your support, amiga. Gracias. Gracias, you are awesome. Salud, you're a sweetheart. Um, we, on Christmas, we have dinner at midnight. Yes, at midnight. All. Like, it's very strange because, you know, it's like about to be 12, midnight, the 24th, going to the 25th. We haven't eaten anything since lunch. But this is like like this because we are like, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of the other. You are around your granny, you know, like going around in circles around your granny. And you're, you're, you're pinching of this, pinching of this, you know. And then, well, it's time to prepare, you know, for the Christmas table. So we start like eating panettone. We eat one, we eat two, we eat three panettone. Uh, um, and then, well, everybody's around the table, around the tree sometimes. And at midnight, we don't eat yet. I mean, most Peruvians, not not everybody because some people cannot for different reasons. Now, maybe because their health doesn't allow them to do that. But most Peruvians, you know, at midnight, first of all, we reunite around the, um, the nativity set, you know, because Peru is mainly a Catholic country. And everybody, the children are, you know, playing, you know, happy because now, you know, Santa Claus is going to allow them to open the presents because the presents are already in the tree. The presents are in the tree. We say that magically Santa Claus, you know, like leaves the presents there in a moment when they are, you know, out of the room. And then we, everybody like puts their presents, you know, there. It's very, very nice. And so when the children come back, is oh, Santa Claus came. I'm so sorry. You skipped to see him. Oh, he was so fast. So children say, oh, no, no. And they see the presents. So I say, okay, so when it's midnight, so they are counting the minutes for midnight. And then exactly at midnight, you know, there is an image of, or there's the nativity set, you know, that always we have. But the baby Jesus is covered with a little fabric white color, always, or it can be cotton. So all the baby is covered. So the little one of the house could be the child, the children, the youngest person in the house, takes that out, you know, like, and it symbolizes that baby Jesus has been born. Okay. And uh, so that's the moment when baby Jesus is here exactly at midnight. And then after children say, we want to open the presents. We know. So it is very funny because if you have children, children don't care about food. They want to open the presents. So while the adults are sitting already in the table and they are starting, you know, to, to arrange, you know, someone starts to give the presents to everybody. And after that, it is maybe, you know, 12, 30 a.m. And then people start eating there at that late or early. I don't know how to say it. So it is very crazy, but it's the way it is. <laughs> so uh, and we eat a lot of food. So this is one of the meals we eat. So let me just move this here. I think we're going to be needing also to add a little bit more water. We have to leave this for approximately, I will say, 10 minutes, okay? So 15 minutes already passed, okay? My granny, I don't know how she used to do it because I'm copying her recipe, but she said, okay, in her recipes, you know, there's a lot of, a pinch of this, a little bit of this, a handful of this, you know, it's so complicated sometimes <laughs> because she had everything here in her mind. So before that, Grace, querida, gracias, querida. Grace is our, our guide in Buenos Aires. She's an expert in street art. Actually, Grace inspired me to, to be a, a street art like um, a guide because I didn't do any of those. Just give me a second. I will show you some pictures of me. 
um, I didn't do any of those street art tours until Grace. Gracias, Lynn. Thank you. But she helped me think out of the box. Uh, so, gracias, Grace. I really hope you can come back to do our tours, street art tours. She's super awesome. Follow her also. And follow Sayuri and follow Elizabeth. My friend Elizabeth is here from the from the country of Arequipa because we have an internal joke in the country. We say Arequipa is not part of Peru. It's a different country. <laughs> so, you want to see me when I was a baby? Who wants to see me when I was a baby? Mm -hmm. If you, if you wa would like to, Ronnie wants, yes. Because, you know, I'm celebrating my, you know, like second year birthday in the virtual world. So <laughs> I have, look at, this is the old type of albums, photo albums. This is from my mom. My mom kindly uh, shared this with, with us. So, <laughs> yes, do you remember Grace? You know, and, and with the plastic on top. So, well, some of them probably are going to be, you know, censored because I was too sexy when I was a baby. So this is me. Let me turn the camera because the light maybe is not helping. Okay, let me see this. Okay, and we'll turn down the heat and that will not burn. So look at me. This is my granny. And this is me when I was just like uh, the day I returned um, home from the hospital. So this is my granny, Yolanda. She is the person that inspired my all my cooking series. So let me show you more. I think I have another one that is decent. Well, me as an angel, baby. <laughs> and... This one here is very cute. It's my mom, my grandmother, and me. And also, I would like to tell you something that I was born with. I was born with a condition that um, it's really, it's not so, un, un, uh, let's say, not so common. Let me turn the, move the, I was born with four, four wine birthmark. You know what is that? Who knows that? Or do you have a friend that has it? Hmm? Port wine birthmark. Yes. And I was born with it here. So let me show you how it looked like when I was a little baby. So it was a vascular birthmark. And my family was, oh, Diana. No pisco recipe. Do you see I'm missing my refrigerator? <laughs> it broke. <laughs> no ice, no pisco. <laughs> I will be doing it again. I will be doing it again. So sorry. <laughs> but today everything happened to me, let me tell you. But Diana, I will be doing next time. Maybe for, I will be having one for um, New Year's Eve. So... My grandmother and my grandfather. Yes, Maple, no, my brother is not really here. He is now working. Yes, my brother is my former chef. This is the house where I have always lived. Actually, this house is the house that you see in that picture. Ah, and my mom. So, and let me show you my dad because I think you haven't seen my dad yet. Um, he's somewhere here. He's very handsome. My daddy is really handsome and he has a very, very nice personality. Let me check on, I think, this picture here. Oh, yeah. This is my dad, and this is my mom. Oh, I will tell, I will tell Luis Alberto that you miss him. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much for thinking of him. He tried really to make some room in his time to come over, but, you know, sometimes job is not really, you know, so easy. This is me 
with the uniform from school. Uh, we used to go with gray uniform uh, to the schools. Nowadays, what we still in national schools, in private schools, there are different colors. But back in the days, private schools and national schools, they used to have, uh, used, we used to use the same type of uh, uniform. Mm -hmm. And finally, is there some other nice one here? Let me check if there's one you would like to see. Oh, for those that are, no, Luis Alberto. Do you want to see my brother Little? This baby boy over here is my brother just born. <laughs> this is Luis Alberto and my mom over here and a close friend of my mom. So this is... <laughs> <laughs> my my brother hates this picture. <laughs> He's going to kill me. <laughs> so, well, a little bit of my brother. Anyways, for my friends who were here today, um, I really hope you enjoy these memories from, from my childhood. And also uh, in this one here is, you know, Halloween. And I don't know. Who has been dressed up as a gypsy in Halloween? It was the easiest, the easiest costume probably, right? Like me, like for maybe five years consecutively. <laughs> Gracias, Lynn. No, so this is me. I must be there like four years old, more or less. Uh, and um, dressed up in, you know, like gypsy. It was easy, no? Because your mom could put like anything, like one of the, her old dresses. Wait a second, you're not uh, One of her old dresses, you know? And it was easy really for everybody. So now we're going to cook more. I think maybe it is already done, this rice. I think it is already. Oh, let me check this. Hola, Ruth. Gracias. <laughs> Gracias, Diane. That's part of my family. My family is it's really big. It's really, really big. You, you know that Latin American families tend to be huge. There was a gentleman that was looking at the house. <laughs> and he was like, you know, what's happening inside? He's gone already. But my house is literally next to the, you know, like... We, we can see, you know, the people passing and everybody comes to the, <laughs> to the kitchen when I'm doing these virtual events. So now we're going to check on the rice and see how it goes. Okay. Whoa. So let's get a spoon. It, it might be very hot. So we're going to just... Gracias, Lynn. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Just a little bit, a little bit more to dry it. And you know what we will do here in this moment? There is something we do. There is a trick we do. Who knows this trick? The plastic bag. <laughs> Who knows the trick of the plastic bag? Well, my granny used to use it. And when you put the plastic bag in the last part, it dries faster or cooks better. I think it's the, it really is a good solution. Okay. Okay, just very low intensity of the heat. And we are going to, you know, keep going just like the last five minutes. So thank you so much to all the people that are have joined to my second year anniversary. I want to also, well, now share with you some memories from, from these two years uh, of, you know, so many experiences, so many things I've learned, so many mistakes I've made also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Grace is easy. Is 
arroz árabe. Arroz árabe. You can also look for arroz árabe peruano. But to just do it exact way how we do it, if you are looking for online recipes in Spanish. And if you are looking for seeing this full event, you can come to my YouTube channel, Adventuros Travel Guide uh, in YouTube. Or you can go to my profile here in Hago. I think it's here or it's here, but you can go to my channel. And um, there you're going to see all my links of my sort of like a, a social medias. And there you will see my link to my um, YouTube. So you are welcome to come to my YouTube and you'll see all of my cooking classes there. All of them. So, yes, it is also known as Persian rice as well. Uh, eh, arroz persa, arroz árabe, um, and this idea of fried noodles in the rice is is also very well defined in different parts of you know of the Arab world so far I know. And this rice came uh, in the 19th century, also uh, is one of the dishes that we started to embrace back in that time. By the way, I'm using the yellow color for good luck. And if you want to know why we use yellow color for good luck, you have to come for, to my uh, virtual event uh, uh, dedicated to New Year's Eve at a market. We will go to a market, to my market, just 10 blocks away here. Uh, and we will talk about the uh, New Year's Eve traditions. And if you still have time also to do some events before that, I will be doing another tour to that market, but focusing Christmas and the history of Christmas. So you are all invited. So this is for a, a good next year, you know, lucky, you know, with lots of fortune. So um, I learned really a lot in these years. First of all, I learned that virtual virtuality, like a virtual world, feels, you know, the same in many ways as the real in-person world because the friendships I've made, the feeling I have after finishing a tour, you know, that adrenaline is pretty much the same, the same sensation of pleasure, of, you know, like a sharing with, with the people, you know, like a, your passion, your love, um, the, the satisfaction, basically, you know, it's, it's very big. It's the same like when I do the in-person tours. Uh, also, I've made mistakes, uh, sometimes making my tours too long, um, which is still I'm dealing with because I like to talk. <laughs> Oh, gracias, Grace. Grace, just share my uh, Hago channel if uh, in, in link if you want to visit me later. Um, gracias, Grace. Um, so basically, I've been learning, like uh, doing tours too long doesn't really guarantee people will be interested in the whole thing from beginning to end. Um, another thing that I've learned is that it is okay to, you know, to, to be uh, specific when you are a tour guide, like into what are the things you you love to do? Like one of the, the persons that show me that is Grace, for example. No, Grace, our guy, is specialized in street art, and she loves that, uh, and she puts so much love and and and, and it's, it's her thing. No, so not necessarily you can do like everything. It, you have to do the things that in your heart, you know, you are being called to to do. Um, and well, experimenting new things also. Uh, I was very ashamed, like, of, you know, talking about controversial topics. You know, maybe this is not going to be for me. Maybe people will don't like my controversials. And eventually I realized that it's not just that people are interested in controversial topics or the untold history. It's also that I am interested in sharing that. Like, this is what my, my heart wants. Um, so I've been learning a lot. I have so many now good friends uh, and I hope that, you know, these friendships, you know, will be forever because now we can also, you know, like being in touch like uh, virtually like every time. No? So uh, it's not like here I had some wonderful tour groups in person, but when we say bye, it's bye, like probably we'll never see each other again. But with you, I can see you or you can see me also and I can read you you know, always. So that's precious. So, well, I just wanted to <laughs> give you an idea of what I have learned in these two years. Um, and, uh, uh, well, I, I really hope um, my channel is also your cup of tea, that you, you like what I'm doing. I do different things that I'm passionate about. And cooking, I am passionate in eating. 
and I'm now passionate in learning how to cook better. So we are going now to serve the plate. Just give me a second because of course we need to put this on a plate. So remember that this dish is pretty much what we call a acompañamiento. Acompañamiento means that, you know, it, it goes as part of your, could be the pork, could be also, let me just turn the camera over here so you can see this. Oh, I think we have to put, ah, you know, I am doing this events alone. Uh, so I need my tripod uh, to be very well located. Um, so, well, it's basically the, the idea of, of this option is that you will be using it with other things in the in the table, right? Also, something, for example, that goes really good with this is your puree of apples. Apple puree with this and your slice of pork. Aha, uh -huh. going to put some other uh, decorations over here to make it look nice because why not? Aha, uh -huh. so this is one of the ways you can serve your rice. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> And well, I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. I hope that you, uh, well, feel like completely blessed, you know, with, um, you know, health uh, and, and also success, you know, and, and love and family union. And at the end, that's what matters, right? So here we have our late, let me clean the border here, the edges, so you can have a nice picture. And I will put it in the table. So let me now show you. Just give me a second. We are going to put this here in our little table. So in that way, you will have a nice picture. So let me show you this. Uh-huh. So we have here our special rice for Christmas. Uh, oh, gracias, Marilu. You're a sweetheart. Gracias, gracias. And I always, well, try to see your comments and, and, and improve the content uh, according to what you're looking for. And also that reminds me, for those that want to learn Spanish, I will start with my Spanish for Travelers series. My friend Patrick T recommended me to do this. And I said, of course, Patrick, can I use the name? Yes. <laughs> so I will be doing uh, this series of Spanish for Travelers it's starting very soon. So check out on my channel. Uh, here we have a rice. We have our, look at this Christmas, uh, sorry, this nativity set. Uh, so we have baby Jesus, and I like this one here below because baby Jesus is in a leaf of coca. Who knows what's the coca leaf? Uh, let me check. Uh, you cannot see it well. I'm so sorry, but it's not really focusing so well. But well, this is the baby Jesus right a baby jesus in a coca leaf we have mary you know as an indigenous woman we have also this is a miniature one and yes we have the chef kui of steffi <laughs> this is the chef kui of steffi he came from ecuador to say hi to me <laughs> Also, we have our special, you know, like a nativity set with, oh, sorry, this cow, uh, with llamas, alpacas, cows, and guinea pigs, okay? So, well, amigos, gracias, Katy, gracias, Patty, gracias. Uh, um, thank you so, so much for your participation in this many series that I've been doing, not just in the cooking classes, especially in my um, events you know, like a 
just from Lima, everywhere. Uh, and I promise you this next year is going to be awesome. Um, you're going to see Lima in a way no other person has shown you Lima, uh, even if you have been in person. You know, you're going to really see a more intimate side of, of Lima. So please, if you can follow this channel, thanks. If you are new to my channel, uh, well, thanks a lot for coming. And I promise you, you're going to have a lot of fun here in Lima. Uh, well, don't forget to follow my colleagues in Latin America. They are awesome, all of them. Oh, Renan, uh, Sayuri, um, Grace, Fabian, he's super awesome. Steffi, Elizabeth from the country of Arequipa. <laughs> Mike also, he's doing great tours every once in a while. Uh, and well, in North America, we have Patrick, uh, we have uh, our New York guides. We have many more guys. I have to see them more but uh i promise you you're going to have a lovely lovely time so well best to you all and well let me also show you my new baby this is my baby that just came home uh she's a three and a half year old she was looking for you know family and now she's the new member of our family now we are a family of six we're not a family of five and she's asleep by the way she's asleep <laughs> oh so she's a bulldog french bulldog huh so well her name is vaquita 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 it means little cow so she's a little cow because she has the, the colors of a, a little cow so well Take care, amigos. Gracias. Best to you all. Love from Lima, Peru. See you soon. Chao. Gracias.